I'm going to answer a question that I get often, and that is, how can I detach but still stay engaged in the relationship, still say, stay connected to and involved with the other person? And that is a good question because a lot of people misunderstand detachment as being unattaching, as being separate completely and not being in the relationship. And that can be the case. Sometimes detaching can be a physical detachment where you physically separate yourself from the person you separate in a marriage and you live in a different place or you get a divorce and you start a separate life or you cut off a relationship with somebody who's really toxic, a parent, a sibling, a friend, or you leave a job because of how toxic it is. So there are times when detaching is a physical detachment, but most often we're detaching from somebody with whom we are still in a relationship. And the misunderstanding about detachment then is that you abandon the person or you completely shut down and you have nothing to do with the person. You don't interact with them. You don't call them. You don't, you don't do things for them that you would normally do. You kind of shut down, shut down your emotions. And that's not really healthy detachment unless that's the only thing that you can do because the relationship is so toxic and so far gone. So the purpose of detaching is what we call healthy individuation or healthy differentiation. Those are two different psychological terms that describe you being able to be a separate person in the midst of relationship with other people. So as a child, you're growing up and you're accepting what your parents tell you as that's the way the world is, that's who God is, that's who faith is. And then as you become a teenager, much to your parents' horror, you begin to question the values and the beliefs that your parents have brought you up with. And you start thinking, okay, that's what they think, but what do I think? Do I accept the same religious beliefs that they have taught me, or am I going to choose something else? So that questioning is healthy, and that questioning is necessary for you to own these things as your own and to make decisions about who you are going to be. So detachment is being able to do that in a relationship. So even if you're married, you can still and should still be detached, a separate person from your spouse. You don't think the same. You don't like this, all the same things. You don't have all the same beliefs. You don't perceive things the same. You are different. And being able to maintain that individuality, that difference while you're in the relationship or connected is healthy. The opposite is being codependent, where you can't maintain your individuality. When you're with a person or in a family, you become enmeshed and you think what that person thinks, you feel what that person feels, you believe how that person believes, you need that person's approval to make a decision, you want to know how that person is thinking and feeling or what that person wants to do before you can decide what are you thinking and feeling and doing. That is unhealthy. That is being too enmeshed. And then the other extreme of enmeshment in a family is to be completely unattached. And the boundaries are so rigid that the walls are so high that you, you have complete unattachment instead of healthy detachment. So let's talk about healthy detachment. So you separate yourself emotionally, spiritually, mentally, like I said, sometimes physically, it can be physically temporarily, you can walk out of a room or end a conversation from somebody that you're reacting too much to. You can get a break from that person and go outside or go take a walk or go to the store. 
uh, but emotionally, spiritually, mentally, from the person's choices, from the person's feelings, from the person's belief, from the person's moods. Mood is very similar to feelings, although mood means that you're having, the person's having a bunch of dark feelings and is kind of given into that and is just kind of going down and is resentful and has a lot of criticism and it's just really negative and just really somber and gloomy. Um, that's what generally is referred to by a mood. Um, especially what is often referred to as a dry drunk mood. But anyway, it's that healthy separation. What am I feeling? What is the other person feeling? What am I doing? What is the other person doing? I can feel something different than you. I can do something different than you. I can make a choice that's different from you. I'm not responsible for your choices. You're not responsible for mine. That's very healthy detachment. So all along with that, you're just have, being a different person. Even if you're married, you're still an individual person. You're one in a spiritual sense. You're one in way of making your life together, but you still are independent in all of those ways. And you will independently give an account of your life to God. You will not be able to stand up there with your spouse next to you before the Lord and say, well, you know, if only he were not so difficult, then I wouldn't have had a hard time. He's not going to be able to say, well, if only she wasn't such a nag or she wasn't like pushing me so hard, I would have been nicer. No, God's going to be like, you're going to be on your own. Each of us, Romans 14, 12 says, will give an account of our lives to God. So each of us is a separate person, even if we're married, even if we're the child of a parent. So recognize that. The next one is to take responsibility for your own feelings, all right? That person feels this way, you feel this way. That person made that choice, you made the, your own choice. Don't blame it on the other person. Don't blame it on circumstances. Take responsibility. I'm responsible. I did that. It doesn't matter if I reacted to you. I did it. I'm responsible. And you give the responsibility for the other person's choice back to that person. You don't take it on either. So you just take responsibility for your stuff. Then you want to be able to step back and view the relationship, what's going on from kind of a detached viewpoint, like a third person viewpoint, like, okay, if I were a fly on the wall and I were looking down and I was seeing this discussion going on between these two people or this situation, what would I see? Well, I would see this person getting angrier and being really aggressive. And I would see this person maybe backing up and getting fearful. Or maybe I would see this person kind of gear up to fight and kind of step forward and escalate. So what do you see? What would you see if you were a fly on the wall? Now you have to be able to self-evaluate and not be having a whole bunch of defensive, you know, defense mechanisms that would keep you from being able to look at the truth about yourself. So, but fly on the wall, what do you see? Try to describe it. What if, what if it was a movie and you were watching it on a screen? What would be happening? What would you be observing? What would you be thinking about what was going on? What, what do you, are you surprised at what you see in yourself or you know, whatever it is? You want to step back and view it. Then recognizing what is going on when you see that and allowing this other person to own their own stuff, being able to separate yourself from this person, you owning your own stuff, then basically you hand the stuff back to the person that belongs to them and you own what belongs to you. And now you can say to yourself, when I'm not taking on their stuff and I'm only taking on mine, how do I have a relationship with this person? And continue to allow them to own their own stuff. It doesn't mean that there's not a time for boundaries or speaking the truth. This is just about 
the detachment, just about how to detach and still engage. So you're going to say, okay, I'm going to continue to interact with that, this person while I'm detached, meaning I'm not taking their mood on, I'm not taking their beliefs on, I'm not having to be just like them, I'm not taking responsibility for anything they do, I'm not going to feel like they feel, I'm going to ask myself what I feel, and I'm going to be separate, and I'm going to maintain my own thoughts and beliefs and feelings. Now, you have a relationship with that person, but you have something, you have boundaries. You have boundaries to protect you. If there's a boundary that you need to protect you from this person's anger, you set that boundary. If it's a boundary that you need to protect yourself from taking on the responsibility from this person's consequences, you set that boundary. If it's a boundary to keep you from being abused and having things done that are unacceptable, you set that boundary. So the boundaries can protect you and allow you, if it's safe and if it's wise, to continue to engage with this person. And you then continue a relationship with them. And here's where the admonition of Jesus to love our enemies and to be kind to those who mistreat us, those who curse us. We give them a blessing instead. And we are to, it's like, bring our enemy a cup of cold water. So you can detach from somebody who is doing things that you don't agree with, or who is maybe has a mood or is in a bad mood or, you know, and, and, and when it's safe, when it's wise, you can be kind to that person. You can say, I'm going to take a break and go out and take a walk. I'll be back in a little while. You don't have to say, I'm getting the heck out of here because I can't stand being around you. No, you can say, I'm going to take a break. I've got some errands to run. I'll be back. Or you can say, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to sit outside for a little while because I just need some fresh air. So you can take care of yourself and detach from that person you can be kind to that person. Can I get you something to drink before I leave? Can I do anything for you when I get back? Or when I get back, I'll be glad to help you with something if you need it. Or please think about what you would like for dinner. And then I'll go get something to, for us to eat. I mean, you can be detaching from the behavior, but be kind to the cursed person. You can have situations, behaviors, characteristics that you do not like about a person and you can detach from those, not take them on, not take on the responsibilities and still engage in the relationship. You do not have to shut down and unattach just because you are learning how to healthily detach. I hope that makes sense and gives you some clarity. I think it's a good thing to clarify so that you can differentiate between that unhealthy, unattaching, and the healthy detaching. Thank you for watching this video on Change My Relationship.